Good morning, welcome on Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to get back to installing the propane lines. In part one of this video, I believe I got this gird in place. Part one was almost two weeks ago, so it's kinda of hard to remember what was in there but I know I assembled the one inch entrance assembly, which ends at the valve up here, and was supposed to go out far enough out of the building so that I can get the regulator on there later, or the gas company can, but I want it nice and tight up against the building. So a six inch was just a hair too small, six inch nipple, but an eight inch was gonna be too long. That would have put it that far out and i only have four feet between the retaining wall and the wall here i do not want that regulator sticking out that far so i needed a one inch die which i didn't have so i got a new die set for pipes this is the one inch and I'm gonna take this. This came about a week after I ordered it, and that was about a week ago. So yeah, this has been a good two weeks since part one of this. I also, in that meantime, got all these girts in, and I did not film that. So that part's done. Once I get this pipe going up and into the rafters there, I'll get that stuff done too, and we're gonna be well along our way. The piece of pipe that I cut in the last video is still sitting over in the vise in the shed, waiting to get threaded. So let's take this, get over there, get that threaded, and hopefully I measured right, and that's gonna be perfect. Once that's installed, which is not gonna be super easy because I have to bracket that to the back of here, and then I'm gonna to need to put some kind of a support next to it so that when the regulator's put on, it doesn't wanna turn. Yeah, that's gonna be kinda of interesting, but first of all, we gotta get that pipe threaded. All right, here we are in the machine shed, and this is the assembly that I assembled last time, and the part I need goes right there. It's all chucked up. I have never used a ratcheting pipe threader before. Where is mine? This was my dad's and I think my grandpa actually bought this way back when. But anyways, it only goes up to three quarter and it's pretty dull. I used this on the main house and it took forever to get things threaded with it. I don't know if you can even get inserts for that anymore. Here's the insert for this one. You can see this has been sitting around forever. But anyways, we got a new one over there. We'll get some cutting fluid on here and start ratcheting away. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I clamped it in place and it's going through the hole. I may have to tap it a little bit to get it in the perfect position. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to move the clamp to, to get a strap on there, but we'll see how it looks on the outside. Hopefully there's no wind over here. Uh, just a little bit. This GoPro Hero 10 is just horrible in the wind, even with the media mod. It's just terrible. Okay, that looks real good. I'm gonna put a cap on that and we'll have the guys from the propane company come and test it. Well, I'm gonna test it as well, but they need to test it before they'll hook it up. But they'll put the regulator on and test it. And then we'll be off to the races at that point. Okay. Ha. Huh. I put the ladder too far away so she can't get up there, but she's looking to jump. Maisie. 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 Yeah, she's going to ignore me. Don't you jump. Okay, let's get some straps on this. Then I can seal that hole on the inside and on the outside. Put that cap on. And I'll have to do something, probably put a board going from here down to the bottom and then strap it to that as well. And I got to tape all this stuff up. Good amount of work to do. Then I can get my measurement to cut my next pipe that's going to go from here up a little bit higher than the top of the trusses up there. Okay, I have one strap on there, and again, what I did, it's just a strap and a piece of heavy sandpaper. The sandpaper goes into the strap, and once it's tightened down, that will keep the pipe from slipping up and down. It's in there real tight with one, but with two straps on there, it's not going to want to tip that way you could bend that strap just by pushing this a little bit. And with two straps on there, it's not gonna do that. Let me get this strap on there. Then we'll get this taped up. Then I have flex seal for this gap here. I gotta put that on inside and out. Gotta put the cap on the outside and then we'll worry about that next piece here. All right, nice and plumb and very sturdy. Now, I'm going to get some acetone and clean this area up, then we'll get this taped and flex sealed. I decided to use alcohol instead of acetone because acetone might loosen up the paint a bit and I don't want that. I have to clean the outside as well and I don't want to mess up the paint. Getting a good amount of stuff off. And I looked everywhere for this and finally found it. It's not, what was I calling it? Flex? Flex something. I don't think I was calling it Flex Shot. Um, as seen on TV. I never seen it on TV, but this got good reviews on Amazon. So I need something that's really flexible so that when this siding expands and contracts, it's not going to open up and let water in. Almost every caulk will do that. I'll have to keep an eye on this though. All right, now I'm going to tape that up with some block of tape. I am not going to put this flex shot on it yet because I'm thinking the weight of the rest of the pipe is going to change how this sits. So I really don't want to caulk this up and then have the weight of the pipe break the caulk seal. So I'm just going to get this taped and if I can get that other pipe in today, I'll caulk it after that. But whenever I get it in, it's going to get caulked after that. And the reason for taping this house wrap is because if I ever get 
any condensation between the tin and the house wrap. I don't want that rolling down the house wrap and dripping inside. Okay, now that I got that taped up, what I think I'm gonna do is cut a block that goes from here down to the grade board there. That'll keep this from sagging. This is eight feet long from the column there to the column over there. So it's gonna to tend to sag with all that weight on it, at least until I get all these brackets on, on the other girts there. So I'm gonna get that cut and put in. Then I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. This is all the stuff it took to get that in there. Kind of a lot. I'll just move that out of the way because I gotta get up on the ladder and run a level over to there and then drop a tape measure down and hopefully get into here, get that dimension, and then figure out what I have here is, oh, where is that? I have a reducing elbow. This is one inch on this end and three quarter on that end. So I'm gonna have to figure out how things go so that that goes up, the reducing elbow goes on it, and then it goes over and it'll hit right on the top of the truss up there. I want it to hit pretty much exactly, otherwise everything's gonna be all cocked up there. Okay, let's get that block cut real quick. Okay, I'm up at the top of the ladder, so what I'm doing, just take the level from the top of the truss over there and then marked a line right here on the top girt. Now, if I take a square right to that top line, I can measure down, then this will represent the top of the truss and I could do my calculations from there. This is probably gonna be pretty hard to measure down unless the tape fits into the valve down there, which it just might. It does. All right, so all the way into that valve is a good enough dimension or a good enough place. I could just put that pipe in here and then mark it, but it's too tall. Okay, 102 and a half. All right, now I gotta do some calculations. All right, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing here before I forget, it's kind of complicated. Okay, my level line over to that board and then drop down to here. That was 102 and a half. And by taking this and laying it across, if this represents that 102 and a half right here, this is 101 and three quarters. It's a three quarter inch drop right here. So I have to add a half inch to that for the thread in there, which would make it 102 and a quarter which is just a little bit less than what our initial measurement was. But if you measure down into here, the thread's only gonna go in a half inch. And uh, it's kinda hard to do this, but we have three quarters of an inch in there. So you have to add a quarter inch for that, which makes it the 102 and a half that we started with. So. I'm going to cut a chunk of pipe at 102 and a half, get it threaded and put this on it. Then I could take that and screw it onto here and get it to a 45 degree angle. I have a 45 degree fitting. So bring it over so it comes onto here. I can strap it onto the top of that and then put that 45 degree fitting on. And that'll nearly wrap up this area. There'll be just a couple things to do after that. Okay, let's go get that pipe cut. Okay, I am gonna have to wrap this up for today. 
The next thing that needs to be done is a girt needs to be put across the top there. Then I can put this on. I went across the street and cut the pipe, threaded it, and got this elbow on it, this reducing elbow. Once this pipe, I'll have to push it up through there and then thread it onto here, get it nice and tight, and then I need it to end up at the correct angle, 45 degrees. That's a little bit involved. There's no time for it today. It's already five o'clock. I've spent, what is it, probably five and a half hours on this so far today. And a whole lot of the time was running around trying to find stuff. But she's all ready to go. And I'll be able to get this pipe and hopefully this pipe right here, this three quarter inch pipe over across the top of the truss tomorrow and then that 45 degree pipe on there. Then from there, I'm gonna have to put in some bracing. Well, actually a support. I'm gonna put a two by four going from that truss over to this truss and the pipe's gonna rest on top of that. Then I can put in this flex pipe, which I've never used before, but doesn't appear to be too difficult. Put this in and that is going to run across to where the heater is and then another one's going to run into this space over here for a future heater if we should ever choose to put one in there. I don't know if we will or not but no sense in not running gas to an area that's likely to have a heater. Okay so tomorrow I'll at least be able to get this part of the project done. Get a pipe from here up out of the insulation and over the top of the truss up there. That way I'll be able to get the rest of these girts on, the rest of this insulation, and continue with my insulation around the corner. The next thing that's gonna stop me, possibly, is the light out here. I'm gonna go right through that girt right there, and the light's gonna be right in the middle there. I gotta get that in before I can do this bay right here. And that's not really going to be that hard, so I don't see a whole lot holding me up getting the rest of this wall insulated. Then I have the heater and the mini split to go through that wall. That wall is going to take a while. So if you want to see all that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.